Time to take a look at medieval logistics and a big thank you here to Jack for sending me this book from my wishlist. Now one very important aspect here is there is this, for a long time there was this trope going on of the dark age of like this basically logistics were in the dark ages they were bad but in Roman times they were good. So this is not particularly true. So there was basically the assumption besides pre-modern Europe there was no good logistics except for Rome. Which is not particularly true because if we look at the realities of the, the amount of the armies, the, how large they were, what they deploy, the siege equipment and everything else, you had to have some kind of logistical system also in medieval times as it wouldn't have worked. They would have just died and we dive deeper into the numbers later on and you will see this. And also there's this campaign of Edward I in Scotland, you know, the bad guy from, from Braveheart. And there's a lot of paperwork we have and about logistics. So if they create a lot of paperwork about logistics, then this implies that there's some kind of logistical system present at this point. And he was probably not the only one. Now let's get down to the basics. So how much calories on average does a soldier need? And they assumed various scholars that on average it's about 3,600, which is more than we actually use nowadays. And the question is what was, what was the basic, so mainly grains. And Bacharach notes, or the Bacharachs, because they're brothers, they know it's around 2.5 kilograms per day, a mixture of grain, meat, and beer or wine, or end wine. So, for instance, a liter of beer can have to 300 to 600 calories, whereas a liter of wine about 800 calories. And then you can, you can use more meat and then you, or more fat and you need less grain and so you can adapt, adapt it a bit. And also dried meat, for instance, has the same calorie, but there's less um, water in it, but you have the same amount of calories, so you can reduce the weight a bit. But on average, about 2.5 kilograms, they conclude. Now, for animals, it's very important that animals have diff had different sizes back then. So, from what is known, for instance, cattle was about 2.3 of, of the size of nowadays. Then other important aspect of animals is that, for instance, horses are way more fragile than humans. So they need way better um, substance. They need to be fed more regularly, else they might perish. And they're also, they need about 10 times as much water as a human. And they need about 10 kilograms of fodder. Now, some of you might note, okay, well, it's a horse, I just give it grass. Well, no. Horse is a stall feed animal. So this means about 50% of the food it gets must be barley, oat or something. So something that isn't grass. For instance, in contrast to pony, you can feed pony mostly with grass. And of course you also need to realize you on campaign. So they are not riding around in the meadow. They, are, they, they carry stuff, at least the warrior or something. So this was a problem, for instance, with the Wehrmacht. So people say, okay, let's just give them grass. No, no, you have to feed your horses and everything. They require a lot. So, and horses, as far as I know, are way less resource efficient than, for instance, trucks. But yeah, let's skip the second verbal for now. Now, let's look at some examples we have for transport. So a man on average can carry about 43 to 46 kilograms 25 kilometers a day. Now, one way, there are several ways now to, to transport various goods. One of the probably easiest ways, at least for providing meat, is herding. So you bring, you bring a whole herd of animals with you. Now you say, okay, this might be a real logistical or a real maintenance issue because if you have a large herd, you need a lot of people to cover it. From what we know from the Wild West, it's basically that 50 men around are sufficient for a herd of 2,000 animals. Because usually they follow an 
a leading animal and one trick apparently is you put the bell on the two leading animals and everyone falls behind. So I, I haven't tried this, but they know that and, and it seems it makes sense because we, we know that they had large herds that they travel around and everything. So then you have also pack animals. So a horse or a mule can carry about 100 kilograms. Of course, and then you have vehicles and you have two different kinds. You have carts, which are basically two wheelers. And you have wagons, which have usually four wheels. So the estimated average for a cart is to supply 280 men per day. And for a wagon, it's 370. Well, what's the main difference? So if you use pack animals, you, you're very mobile, but they carry only 100 kilograms. With a cart, you are less mobile, but still higher maneuverability than a wagon. And for a wagon, you need to have good roads and good weather and everything. So there's always the trade-off. So first off, if you have animals, since they are also very, lead a lot of water, you need to deploy or march along fresh water routes. And then you also need to look, okay, what types of animals do I have? So the efficiency of a cart is way higher than of a pack animal. Bachert notes that the number for pack animal is about 5% of what it carries needs it as food. For a cart it's 2% and for a wagon it's 1.5. But again, with a pack animal you're way more mobile. You can take small, small trails you couldn't use with a cart or even less so with a wagon. So there's always this efficiency, mobility, efficiency, weather conditions, road conditions, and the main thing is, of course, the fresh water supply. Another thing was, of course, ships and boats. Of course, in this case, you have to have also the routes. I mean, you have to have the river or, or some waterway. And the other problem is, of course, availability. Because here we are talking about, okay, do we have proper shipping? Can you buy proper shipping? Can you organize ships? what type of ship. So this is very interesting. So on the ship side, yeah, it, it's really more, more on certain aspects that you can use it. For instance, for the, for the Crusades to a certain degree, Edward, I oh know, Richard I and Philip II of France used, for instance, mainly ships, but others didn't. So if we now look at some certain numbers, for a 1,000 packs of animals, you need about 9,000 kilogram of food per day, of which about 4,000 kilogram need to be grain. And for 1,000 men, you need about 2,500 kilograms per day. As you can see, these are very extensive numbers and without some serious system, without some serious planning, that's not gonna go well because 1,000 men isn't so huge. This isn't a huge army. This is a larger band of raiders, let's call it this one. But it's substantial, but you also need 2,500 kilograms. So the thing is, in, in Rome, you had a centralized system. This is different to the medieval times where you have, with the exception of England, mostly a decentralized system. So what does it mean? In Rome, you had usually a broad tax and then they provided for the army, except for the later years, mainly the whole logistical systems and everything, and you had a centralized army. Medieval times, you have basically mainly a militia. But the militia is also used for offensive warfare. And you have certain magnets, for instance, lords, but also magnets like from the church. And they have had to sustain their militia and they were used during warfare as well. So they provided the logistics, the food and everything for their troops. And this was quite expensive. There's this number of around 50% of the revenue of, for, especially for churches or for, for church officials, they had to spend on, on, this, uh, on the maintenance of their troops. And there's one example for, for one time where one guy managed to have 30, about 30% 30 only for the expenses. So, but this seems to be one of the rare exceptions. So mainly in, in peace, the, the government, let's call it government, the royal house or something, 
had only to maintain its own troops, but not the, all the militia troops. Yet the question is, what happens in war? Now we have some edicts for, from the Carolingian period, where it's noted that the militia have to bring food for three months and equipment, and equipment for six months. So the issue is, if you only assume two kilograms per day, for three months you have 100 kilograms that each guy must bring to the campaign. And if he has a mount, you have to add about one, uh, 450 kilograms as well, so if he has a horse or something. So there's the issue. Can, <coughs> can you bring like 100 kilograms? So the Bachers assume that most people pulled together and got a cart or a wagon. So the thing with cart and wagons is they, are, they, are, they, they were so common that they are rarely mentioned in the sources, usually only mentioned if they were, if they were lost in battle or something. So if the, the enemy cut the logistics or something bad happened, then they are mentioned. But besides that, we don't really know what was organized. So this was one way. The government said, okay, you have to provide for yourself. And then after this period, usually the government provided. So one way was, for instance, which you did for the Crusades, organizing markets. So the government said, okay, um, here guys, we, we will pass through or something, have a market ready and also to fix the prices to a certain degree so that the, the soldiers, the militia themselves could spend the money. So this was probably also maybe like, okay, bring stuff for free months, bring it in money or whatever. Another way was in friendly territory to have their own bases. Monasteries were quite often used for this because they had plenty of space and everything and they were used as bases. And then if available to a certain degree, for instance, on a career period, government facilities. They had a lot of stuff still there, various aspects, I think about 2000 or something that they could use to, to get their supplies from. Now, this mainly assumes you have a good infrastructure. Now, problem is if you attack a territory like in the East where the infrastructure was rather bad and they were also pre prepared for defense in the, in the death. So for instance, they know, okay, we always defend only certain places and all the supplies we have, we either hide, bring into the fortifications or destroy. Scorched earth, strategy basically. So in this case, for instance, quite often these campaigns had to be interrupted or stopped. Only they had a limited goal, then they achieved it, but often the enemy ran and then they had to turn back because else they would be out of supplies. Another way was to build own bases or conquer each space after another. So one year you conquer this space, next year you conquer this fortification, and slowly you conquer these lands. Now another case of course is Northern Italy. Here was the thing, there were a lot of fortifications and everything was quite hard, but they had so much struggle internally that usually local allies provided supplies for, for invading armies to a certain degree. So this is another way how to manage this, that you have local allies or people that provide you with the proper logistics. Now another dark age myth basically is that a lot of logistics or supplies were provided by plundering. This is not really true. There were some exceptions and there were basically one faction who did this very well, which were the Vikings. And I talked about them in an earlier visualized video already, but the thing with the Vikings was they used existing infrastructure in the West and the rivers and everything, there were very few fortifications and everything, so they could use the system and exploit the strengths of, of the logistics or of the infrastructure in the West. And also they focused quite right often on monasteries and as mentioned before, they usually had large supplies there anyway and la a large amount of riches. But what is very interesting is that they also had supply ships because their, their long boats, which are famous, they couldn't put much in there. And it's likely that they couldn't put um, enough stuff in there to actually make the journey. And the other thing is if you loot a lot, which they did, how you transport it back if you have this very fast, nice ship with very few displacement, but you can't put anything in there. So, 
So they had these supply ships. And the other aspect of is there was a weak infrastructure and defense and death as, as, uh, as mentioned before, plundering didn't work. And another thing is, as mentioned in my medieval warfare video already, if you go plundering, you not, must disperse your army. And if you disperse your army, you're in a very dangerous situation. You don't have radio back then. So dispersing your armies and spreading out means, okay, you, you, your troops are piecemeal and the enemy, if he knows, and if you're in enemy territory, he knows the territory way better than you do. He has his local guides. He has people informing him and everything. His lines of communications are way better. He can usually react better. And then he can kill off part of the troops or engage them while your main army is somewhere else. So this didn't really work. So dispersion is dangerous, but you need it for proper foraging or plundering around, at least on a large scale. And we're talking sometimes about large armies because the main, the main form of warfare was sieges. And you can't do sieges with a small band of raiders. You need a large army, you need your siege craft and everything else. Or at least if you don't transport your siege craft, you build it locally. In some cases it was built locally, in some cases they had parts and they put it together, depending on what kind of equipment. But you need a large amount of people for that. And for a large amount of people, as you noticed, for, one, for just 1,000 men for one day you need 2,500 kilograms. And then you have probably around a certain amount of animals to carry all this stuff and then you need another few tons. And this is every day. So just going in there and yeah, let's hope we plunder some, some villages or some, some monasteries. Nah, not gonna cut it usually. Of course, there was occasional small plunder, but for large armies, it was not a way to sustain a campaign. So it would be very stupid. And as mentioned also in my medieval warfare video, troops are very expensive. You don't, as, the, as noted there, battles were usually avoided because sometimes they were not decisive enough and you just lost a lot of your troops, a lot of your lords or other aspects. So it would be more reckless to just, oh, okay, we don't have enough supplies yet, just walk in there and then lose a lot of people. I mean, they had already plenty of health problems and other elements. So it would be just utter negligence. So the other aspect is Crusader logistics. Basically, a lot of agreements happened before the first crusade, for instance. A lot of agreements were made with, with all the countries that passed through and with Byzantine to organize local markets and everything. So this is in stark contrast, for instance, to the People's Crusade, which wasn't very well organized and everything went down the drain. And as mentioned before, Richard I from England and Philip II of France, they sailed to, to the Far East and they used this. So to a certain way to circumvent certain logistical aspects, of course, but then you have to have a fleet for, for France, it was easier because in the Mediterranean, they had a port and everything. But you also, where do you get the ships from? Do you have a standing navy or do you take it from, from your traders, from your merchants? How does this affect the, the overall economy? What is when these ship, ships get lost? So this is also the, the aspect. You, you just take some ships, but where do you take them from? And who, who is going to need them elsewhere? Is in the long run going to hurt your kingdom? Now to summarize, logistics in the medieval age were definitely a thing. We have paper trails, we have large armies that couldn't have been sustained just on plunder or on no existing logical system or an organized way. Now in medieval times you have a more de decentralized system in comparison to Rome. You have services instead of taxes or a mixture between both. So services, for instance, you have a lord, your vassal, and he brings certain troops with him. And he provides also logistics for the troops and, and other aspects. Whereas in Rome, you had more of a broad tax. Then plunder happened, but it was not able to sustain a large campaign, a large army. The only difference, the ones that really used it well were the Vikings, but they were also not large armies. And if they came in large armies to conquer something, they also they acted differently. So this is also very important. So and generally plundering with a large army is dangerous if you use it to sustain the army because you have to disperse your army and then it's rather weak. 
and there are various limited advantages of transport. So pack animals are probably most mobile and maneuverable, but their efficiency is rather low, whereas wagons have a very high efficiency of food to transport capacity, but you need good roads, you need good weather. And for everything, you need fresh water because, well, a horse takes about 10 times the amount of water as a human, and a human already needs quite a lot of water, so usually the campaigns were along fresh water routes. And if not, yeah, that was a major major challenge to support the troops with proper fresh water or wine or beer, which is better for conservation. Now, thank you to all the Patreon supporters on this topic and a big thank you for Jack for sending me the book. Thank you for watching and see you next time.